An integral part of our habit number sheet is this section here. It gives us a lot of data and information that make our little tracker up here um, work and also make these little progress bars work. So what we see when we use these is as soon as we tick things, this changes and down here changes as well. So what we need to do first of all is put some tick boxes in and make it so that we can count how many are ticked and how many are unticked. So the first one's pretty simple. In the done section, we're just counting up the ones that have got ticks in it from each day. So we've got day one in week one here of our month. So as soon as we tick that, it changes what's going on up here. So for this one, all we needed to do was a count if function, which basically means it's gonna count if something is true within a range of cells. So we type in count if, and then automatically it'll want to know where the section is that we are counting from, it's called our range. So for the range, I have given it the whole possible tick boxes for day one of that week in the month. And then we need to give it a condition. Now, once these boxes are ticked, they're called true in our sheet. So all we need to do is just give that as our condition. So it's counting how many of those tick boxes are true, how many are ticked. So once we change it, it changes um, the number up there. It's counted differently. Now the not done one is a little bit different. And the reason for that is because we only want to count the tick boxes that are not done where we already have writing here, because otherwise it's gonna skew our percentages. So this one's a little bit more complex to do. So if we have a look at the formula here, we've got the same ranges again, but we've got a bit more information here. So again, we're counting if, and we're having the same range of our table, but this time we've got this section first, and then we're gonna minus something else. Now, this section here, this formula here, basically is asking it to count if there is, um, only count if there is writing in here. So we need this little section here to get the fact that it's only going to count something if it's got writing in there. What we also then need to minus is the things that are true. So it's going to give us a count if there's writing in there and if there are not true ticks here. So we're gonna minus all the ticks that are true basically. So we're gonna count if there's writing, so one, two, three, four, five, and then we're gonna minus all the ticks that are true. And that's what we end up with on there. So that allows us um, to be able to get more information. I've just changed, there we go. So I've just changed that. So now we can see that it's counting the ones that are there with writing in, but minusing the ones that are already ticked. So we get the amount that are not done. Then we just get a simple percentage. So we can just divide the dones by the not dones. Um, really simple for that one. Once we've got our percentages, now what we can do is we can start to add sections to our sheets just to make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing to allow us to just visualize our progress a little bit more. So I just put in a big table at the top. Um, this is just one big table. And our reference to this one, if we go up to look at this, let's just unlock it. We can see the reference for this. So the reference for this is just the percentages done. So I've just highlighted that, created a bar chart off it and made sure that my little sections are lined up. So like I said, we can see it changing as soon as we start to enter details into the sections down the bottom here. And then we've also got the progress bars as well. Again, they are just little um, references as well. So they can we can just use those. So if we come off of here, and we looked at one of these, for example, and unlocked it. Again, we can just edit the reference and we can just see that it's just the percentage done. So this is just one bar table, one bar chart, and every time it moves, we get a different reaction to it. So as soon as we take them off, it takes off the percentage of that bar chart and it goes up and down. So again, it's just a little bit more aesthetically visual for us to see.